Coach, thank you much. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Cleveland Browns and the Los Angeles Rams. Getting toward the halfway point of the NFL season. Week 7 is underway on EA Sports. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. the first carry now for Todd Gurley and he stopped immediately there no gain on the play it'll be second down and he got off the end there very quickly to make that play yeah it was almost like the bullet train wasn't it I mean just zoom quick 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 and what a terrific play holding them to no gain on second down here's gone Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he had been able to haul that one in. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. Goff now looking to throw. And an alley to run. He'll have a first down past the 40. And he'll take it to the 43-yard line. I guess no need to force it when you can do that instead. First down, 18-yard gain. hands on it yes so they will hold on to the football indeed here's golf now on second down under pressure here and down he goes Sack back at about the 43-yard line. J.J. Watt coming up the middle. Gets him there for a loss of about nine. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. Out of the gun, Goff. He lost a big chunk, six yards there, and it leads to fourth down. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. Duke Johnson deep for Cleveland.
Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and ten. Here we go now. Green, 39. They go play action here on first down. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 30. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. They've got good playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. I don't know what happened last week to, to really hurt their performance and, and hold down their production, but I would dare say that this week in practice, there's a lot of talk about how they're going to increase their proficiency. And that was a good start getting the playmakers involved. You mentioned that to me pregame. That's what they did there. Yeah, I think a lot of people think the coaching staff really gets on them, and that's how they motivate them. Most of these guys are self-motivated. They have a lot of pride in their performance. Give him two yards on that play, and that'll bring up second down. <laughs> Mayfield off the play fake. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. And the Rams got it. They bring him down. Bryce Hager with a big-time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. On fourth down, here's Justin Vogel on to punt it away. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And the Rams now coming out on the field. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Gone. And an alley to run. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in, but somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain. On first and ten, gone. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And <laughs> what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll make it third down. All right. Come on out. Goff now to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. A very good return there. Give him an even 20 yards. And the Browns will take over first and 10. 
Now the Browns offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full playbook. They want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. Well, the first play of the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. Mayfield now on second down. Throw left side, caught by the tight end in Joku. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing and communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. He's got a first down and then some inside the 40. And down right around the 37. It's his first catch, and it'll be good for 15 at a first down. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Mayfield looks to throw, and they'll go right back to Landry. It's complete again. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained. So they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Second and 12 after the first down pass play went backwards for two yards. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield underneath for Johnson. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. It's a gain of seven, and that'll lead here to a third down. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. Again, it's Mayfield. He's going to air one out. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted, but I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yep. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Mm -hmm. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. Yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. Back live now to begin the second quarter with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's the Rams with a football to get us going. They've got it second and ten to start things out. They had the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. 
Eight yards on the run there, and that leaves him with third and just a couple. The Rams on third down, just one for three thus far. This time they face a third and two. To throw is gone. And almost picked off. I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and ten. And he'll start the drive on the ground with Johnson. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Now a second down throw for Mayfield. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. So we race the flag. They decline it. And did they use the big eraser, or was that the one at the end of the number two pencil? Well, I was thinking the like the two by two inch ones that you can buy yeah, and use yeah. a, in and addition are, to the pencil. And those last forever. A long time. No doubt. The Browns on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is going to be third and 13. Go on, go on! Go on, go on! From the gun, Mayfield. He's got his tight end in Joku. A good play there as the Browns strike for 16 and a first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, right, he's going to continue to pick them apart the because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Second down, Mayfield. To the right side and complete to Njoku. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. Go on, go on. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. On third down, Mayfield. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football, and the Rams have got it back. With no running backs in the backfield to help pass protect, all the receivers in their patterns, it's going to be hot routes if they sense a blitz or pressure on the quarterback. They've got to be prepared to break routes off early and get the football. In this case, ah, uh, never even had a chance. They popped the ball free in the backfield. Following the fumble recovery, golf. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. 
That one goes for 24 yards. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. First down, it's Gurley. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Here we go, Tony. Here we go. Goff will hand this one to Gurley. And he's going to get it inside the 10 to the 7-yard line. That's what they needed. It's an 8-yard gain, and now 3rd and 4 suddenly doesn't look so bad. The Rams on 3rd down. They've only converted once in 4 tries. This is 3rd and 4. Now Goff. Flushed out right. He may try and run for this. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. The gain of five that time gives him the conversion and makes it first and goal. Try and push it in with Gurley. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Todd Gurley with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Rams are in for six. Zerline good with a PAT. And that makes it a 7-3 lead. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the inline. And the Browns getting set to go. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go-around. <laughs> a big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over. The other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Now they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. On the tackle, it was the West Virginia man, Kaiser White. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they were hoping, the this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now Mayfield. And he'll be wrapped up around the waist and pushed down. Aaron Donald in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. The Browns on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and 15. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. Michael Brockers. He's the one to get in this time, and back-to-back -back sacks are going to bring up a fourth down. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And they had the touchdown during the last drive, and I'm guessing that you like the balance they had on that last drive. And I loved it. Forget liking it. Absolutely love what they were doing because to be ahead of a defense that much where every play call you have, run or pass, is working pretty well for you. Makes you look like a genius. It really does. It also lets you know that your preparation was pretty good, and now the defense has to do all the adjusting. Now a play fake here on first down. And that's caught at the 25. Touchdown, L.A. Brandon Cooks with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Rams strike quickly here for six points. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, 
That should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. The Browns offense heading back out to take possession. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. Oh, and a bad throw there. It's intercepted. Picked up by Kaiser White. And he'll return it to the 24-yard line. So a minute 55 to go in the first half. We're back to the City of Angels after this timeout. After the interception, here's Gall. That's going to be caught. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash. Dropped at the one. 23 yards on the play. On first and goal, Gurley. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Los Angeles. Todd Gurley with his second touchdown of the game, number eight on the season. And the Rams add on to their lead. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And now the Browns coming out on the field. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. And give the quarterback some confidence. <laughs> see what happened. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Well, they had the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. Detroit! Detroit! Mayfield on play action. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. And down he goes on the pressure from the Rams' defense. And now the Rams are going to halt things as they want a timeout. As he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Take it at the 37. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Rams will go on offense here with the first and 10. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They are clicking on all cylinders. They seem to be just scoring at will right now. And that's why they've opened up this big lead. Now we always talk about getting into the zone and all athletes are seeking that, aren't they? But everything is working for them. Every move they make works. It clicks and they are on point right now. Yeah, they are in that zone that you're talking about. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. To throw on second down is gone. And he's going to be taken down. Goff is sacked. Miles Garrett in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As he'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. Out of the gun, Goff. 
He'll get this complete to Cooper Cup. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. They wind up getting 16, but even that's not quite enough. It's fourth down. Boy, they had a lot of real estate to make up there, but what a big-time play for them. Nice completion, excellent gain. Now they're in fourth and manageable. Just a little short, though, of that marker. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Now it's Duke Johnson here on the return. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. I think it's pretty evident we can say what a difference a week makes. Go Last go week, he ran go pretty go much go wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they stopped him cold. That, to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They obviously watched the tape a few times and made some adjustments. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. A toss play to Chubb. And an alley to run. And able to get this one all the way up to about the 46-yard line. And just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards. And it's second and two. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. They go with Chubb on second down. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. Mayfield on third and two. Eluding the pressure right. Into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off by the Pro Bowler, Marcus Peters. And his guys will take over at their own 44-yard line. Just a little bit of a rough stretch. Six interceptions now in these last two weeks combined. I know the easy thing is to go back to mechanics, footwork, things of that nature. I'm also wondering, is he getting fooled by what he's seeing on defense? Has the scouting report changed? Are they showing him things different than what he expected? For the second week in a row, he's throwing it to the guys in the wrong color shirt. Yeah, he better figure whatever the reason is. He better figure it out. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it. And it took the ball off course. Right. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. counter Gurley and some space here and he is tackled inside the 40 not quite to the 35 that good for 19 at a first down sometimes it's hard to believe but there are times this game is about patience isn't it has had the game he expected but that run there that may get him going I was just gonna say maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right he struggled especially in that first half yeah and I know the great ones always think to themselves just hang in there I'm just one big carry away from busting this open that's a good start for him back to back nice gains that one for 14 yards and another first partner he was going through his progressions not there not there after about the third one he decided he better pull it down and run for it and he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure they go play action here on first down. And this is caught at the eight. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. 
They'll give it to him up the middle. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. So stuff for no gain on second down brings up a pretty interesting third from this distance. I'm throwing the ball, and I'm not even thinking about play pass. I'm going to let him know right away I'm throwing it. I'm probably giving my quarterback some room, sprint him out to one side or the other, and give him an opportunity. If it breaks down, he can take off and run for it. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. And Zerline's kick is good. And that will stretch the lead up to three touchdowns. Now it's a 21-point game. So put another three on the board. All things considered, a good opening drive to begin the third quarter. And as a defense, the way that this game is going, you're excited to see those points go on the board. Gives them a little bit of leeway to play with when they're out on the field. But they're real excited to see their offense score. Now they get to go out there and do their part. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense mm -hmm. at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield looking deep downfield. And that's caught inside the 30. And all the way in, touchdown, Cleveland. Robbie Anderson, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Browns make some inroads here on that deficit. Gonzalez good on the extra point, and that cuts the lead to 24-10. Gonzalez now to kick this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And the Rams getting set to go now. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, I feel like you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Miles Garrett in there to get him, and that's sack number six for him on the year. Coming up now on a second and 15 following that sack. From the gun, here's gone. That's caught by his tight end, Gerald Everett. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. A good pick up there, a 22. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you got a heck of a tight end candidate. Here we go, fellas. Here we go. They'll stick to the ground game with Gurley. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. So on the heels of the run by Todd Gurley, another first and 10. Now a draw as Goff gives to Gurley. Escapes the defender. And all the way in 
inside the 15 before they drop it. A big hitter there. A first down gain of 26 yards. And a nice little broken tackle run there by Todd Gurley, the 10th pick in the 2015 draft. And that's what you get with him. That full package of speed, power, able to catch the ball in the backfield. Many people doubted him coming out because of the knee injury in college. <laughs> They're seeing the full Todd Gurley now, and it hurts. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. A shotgun snap for gone. That's complete right around the eight. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. As his guys are in for six. And the Rams add on to their lead. Sirline connects on the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Now here's Johnson. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two-minute. Who knows? Let's see what they decide to do. Hauled in by Anderson, left side. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive. 12 yards. This quarterback now, five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. Mayfield looks to throw. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Picked off by Akeem Tlaib. And it's a big turnover there on the final play of the quarter. Back now in Los Angeles. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. First down, Mayfield. And the Rams got it. They bring him down. Samson Abukum in there to get him for his second sack of the night. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, and with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. Mayfield toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Daryl Roberts right there on the coverage. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is emboldened in the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Third and long for Mayfield. He's going to air one out. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. The Browns send out their punter now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. Now the Rams offense, they work their way back on the field. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. The throw right side is into the hands of his tight end, Everett. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Follow 
following the penalty. It's Gurley. And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads. Bowled over a few people. Go, Look at that one. Go. Right up the gut. So up through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. Carry now for Gurley. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Now Goff on first down. And the hookup here with Jalen Strong complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. Goff now 6 for 6 since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and 10. Here comes a 20th carry for Gurley. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. And they give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. Here we go, fellas. Here we go. Here we go. Here's Goff now on second down. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Time to give a little credit here. That was an excellent read by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, you're crediting your defense. Got to credit them on that one because they tried to fool them, right? Tried to trick them, ran a screen, and they went to it and smothered it for a loss of yardage. Throwing on third. Gone. This is caught. It's close. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Well, I'm sure he likes this performance a little bit better than last week. He had the three interceptions here, none in the fourth quarter, and he's got his guys in front. Guaranteed he put in a tremendous amount of work this week, but maybe the matchup is just better for him. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. It's almost like those golfers, certain courses fit their eye. And they like what they see. And other courses, as soon as they tee it up, they know they have no shot. Maybe that's the difference for him. Last week, no. This week, a big yes. The stop for no gain brings up second and 10 from the 20. They'll run it now out of the gun. And here's another tackle made at the line. So they're converging well on the football now. The stop was made by Jannard Avery. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. And for the third straight play, he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And it'll be fourth down. And Zerline's kick is good. And that will extend the lead out to 24. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points. But this widens it out, as you said. And now it's all about ball control, isn't it? Here comes the Browns offense back onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Here's Mayfield, and complete here to Carlos Hyde. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. This quarterback now a perfect 8-for-8 eight eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and 10. 
from the gun. Mayfield dumps this to his running back, Chubb. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and it'll be second and about a yard. Looked like a pretty good, safe play right there. No, he's had trouble with the interceptions in this game there. Hits his guy out in the flat. Yeah, so many times we hear quarterbacks and offensive coordinators talk about in your progressions, you're either throwing the touchdown or you're throwing the check down. But earlier in the game, it was touchdown or interception. Now he got to the check down, a nice safe throw and a good one. A good pick up there, 26 yards. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 26-yard line. They'll run the option right here on first down. He'll pitch it. A little second effort there on the strong run. And then drop just inside of the 20. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. Second down, Mayfield. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Jarvis Landry, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Browns get a score closer. And the defensive there, that was a battle. He just made a really nice play. A really nice play, making sure his body position was correct. And how about the throw? Zipped it in there. And it results in the touchdown. And he's got it for the two-point conversion. So they tack on a pair more here to narrow that deficit a bit further. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And the hands team for the Rams able to secure the football. Whoosh. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Defense still with three timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them here as the kneel down comes. And now a timeout called defensively by the Browns. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. way forward here for a modest gain and quickly we're going to get another stop here with 154 left as they call the timeout defensively the Rams on third down they've converted a third of their opportunities three for nine this is third and seven again they run with Gurley and he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. So with that, you figure yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down. But don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen. And you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Now, aren't I, though? And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge. And someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's get out of here and do something some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. First down yardage on the first play of the drive. Give him 14. 
underneath for Johnson. A good cover defensively as they get to him just beyond the 45 after the juke. It'll be a gain of eight yards, and it'll be a second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and lead the game out that way. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. And incomplete, the contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Oh, and now movement and a whistle, and they may have to rethink their plans on fourth down. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Desperation time. Mayfield on fourth down. Flush to his right. He can run for it, and he will. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that'll be just about all she wrote for this one. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. Victory formation as they take the knee. Overtime here out west, and you got a team from the eastern time zone. Maybe their body clock's a little thrown off, or is that overhyped? I don't think it's overhyped, and, and I think that for most teams, you're hoping that your mind overrules your body because your body's looking for slippers and, and, and bedtime clothes, right? <laughs> They're looking for the pajamas. But in this case, you've got to stay with it mentally. And what a lot of teams do, they never change their watches. They always say on East Coast time and just go ahead that way to try and defeat any of the effects of moving to the West. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Rams are victorious here as we say so long from Exposition Park in L.A.